Megan, it's so nice to meet you. Now, you were in the 2018 Love Island. Can you talk me through how that came about? How did you get into it? So I had like a little bit of a following on Instagram and then they DM'd me, asked me to go in Olivia Atwood's year and Kem's year, but as a bombshell. And I was like, oh, it's such a big thing to go on TV. If I'm ever going to do it, I want to go in from the start and have a fair chance because I think as a bombshell or in Casa Moore, it's so hard to try and establish yourself, form a connection in that short time frame. So I was like, no, 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 it just didn't feel right. And I believe so much in timing. So next year they asked me again, I was like, okay, go on then. And just threw caution to the wind and just done it. So they just approached you. Yeah. You didn't approach them, they approached you. And did you go in for uh, fame, money, or just a bit of fun? A bit of everything. If I'm brutally honest, I was working as a stripper and I was bored of that. I was like used to the money and I like that kind of not having a nine to five or a structured work routine. But equally, I couldn't envision myself doing that for a long period of time. So I felt like this opportunity came round. And I don't believe you grow as a person unless you push yourself out your comfort zone. And really, I'm such an introvert. I'm a homebody. I was like, oh, it's so scary. But I just went for it. And it was like the best thing. I came out a different person. I felt like I'd just grown so much in confidence. It's kind of like, to me, you know, um, how to look good naked with Got Kwan. These ladies would strip off and do that photo shoot and they felt so empowered. And that's how I felt by not necessarily stripping off physically, but just like showing my personality to more people. Whereas previous, I was just this like glamorous person on Instagram. Do you know what I mean? I was just yeah. like, a looks thing rather than people knowing my actual personality and that was more intimidating for me than going on screen and being in my bikini all day. So they see your soul almost. Yeah and who I am as a person, my little quirks, my little geeky weird things, my shyness you know. So I think that was more daunting than anything but no I'm so glad I've done it. Did you think that they'd pick you because I read that you thought that you were shy and you are shy, mm. did you think they'd pick you? No or I thought maybe they'll pick me based on like my past, like being the ex-stripper, I don't think they'd had that before. They'd had glamour girls, but maybe not an ex-stripper who was so honest and brutal about it and didn't really make excuses and was empowered by that. So I thought that part, maybe they'd want me for that. But I thought once I'm in there, I'm not the loudest in the room. I'm not really competing for attention or shouting to be heard the most. So I thought, well, maybe the novelty will wear off. I'll be kicked out after a week because I'm too quiet and like fading into the background. But no. And they like billed you as the femme fatale, didn't they? How did that feel? That was good. Obviously, I was so unaware because I got to the final. I didn't know how I was being perceived. I got little tidbits from girls that would come in and be like, oh my God, this has come out online. I'm like, oh my God, you're making it worse. Just probably best not to know anything until I'm out. Um, but no, it, it was good. And I, I do think I just grew in that environment of being around people, doing these silly games and it was, it was fun, it was an experience for sure. It looked like it was fun, but you had that, not a very good experience of when you came out, the press had got hold of a picture of you when you were 16, mm. we think. Um, can you just tell me what that picture was? Yeah, so like I said, I was kind of, thought I was prepared for this. I thought people are obviously gonna be judgmental about maybe the way I, moved in Love Island as regards to going for what I want and not settling and being more of a male energy, I guess, than a girl who might just sit there and wait for a boy to couple up with her. I, I expected there to be a bit of fallout for the way I conducted myself in the villa for the fact that I'd come from a glamour modelling stripper past, but I didn't expect people to tear apart my appearance when I was literally like a 16 year old girl. I think even the most naturally stunning people would look back at a picture of themselves from a decade ago and be like, wow, what were them fashion choices? Do you know what I mean? Especially in that awkward like teenage era. I think a lot of teenagers are a bit like, you try out different phases. Like, yeah, I was shocked. And how, how did you feel about your looks back then when you were 16? Did you? I obviously felt fine. I was like, oh wow, was I really that bad? Like obviously people go through fashion mistakes and my eyebrows were non-existent. They were like, I know it's coming back in now fashion, but yeah, they were so thin. I had zero top lip. This was like before lip fillers. I was doing the biggest, cheesiest grin, had some massive scarf on and some like Specsavers 30 quid glasses on that were massive like, 
bottles. Do you wear glasses or were they just your... No, I wore glasses. I was short-sighted. But back then I thought they were edgy and cool. I was like, yeah, I want these really oversized glasses. But everyone was saying, oh my God, she looks like a French exchange student with that scarf on and the massive glasses. Well, I'll take it. And do you think it was fair that they like, that they did? Because you said they compared you as a teenager to you as a wee 23 when you were in, yeah, as a 23, 24 yeah. year old woman. Do you think that was fair? I think people love to tear people down. I think whether it's in a business way, if it's in a physical way, People love to sit back and be like, oh, well, you think you're on Love Island now, but look how you, like, I don't know. I think just as a society, we're a little bit guilty of doing that. We have our own issues going on. And I think that's a way to kind of vent some of your anger or frustrations to someone that doesn't seem human. Yeah. Just because they're winning, because they're on a TV show, but still that person's gonna get into bed every night at the end of the day and have the same exact feelings, emotions, insecurity as someone who hasn't been on TV for four weeks. How did it make you feel? I was shocked. I think the main thing was shock. I wasn't surprised. I think because I've dealt with slut shaming, shaming for my appearance from such a young age, that I kind of, as sad as it is, I didn't think, I don't know. I just didn't think people would be that harsh about a 16 year old's looks. I was gonna ask you about that because um I know that from 13, you were kind of bullied because of your ears. Mm. Um, and is it? And did you have surgery on your ears because of that? Yeah, I think it gets to a point where you've got to weigh up your quality of life. And if you're waking up every morning and your distraction is, how am I going to style my hair for school so kids don't call me nasty names, as opposed to, what options do I want to pick for my GCSEs? How well am I going to perform in this exam? And if that's like taking over your life, then I think despite your age, we shouldn't discriminate if someone's 16, 15, 18, whatever. If their quality of life is being altered and their whole day revolves around their looks because other people's outside influence are bringing them down and being nasty, who are we to say, no, you're too young? If it's going to make you perform better academically, if it's going to make you more focused on the things that truly matter five years from now, who are we to judge and say, oh no, you shouldn't get that done, you're too young, you're not an adult yet. Did it make a difference when you did have them? Yeah, but you've got to remember, kids are evil, so I didn't really think the process through. I begged and begged. My parents, they didn't have loads of money, so it was a big deal to get it done. It was like their savings that they had. And I was like, please, like, I really want to move schools. Like, kids are so nasty. So it wasn't like a quick decision. And I didn't really think through the process of having to turn up to my mock GCSE exams with a massive bandage like this around my head. Did you ever, like, confront the bullies or...? No, I was so shy back then and so insecure. And kids are evil. I remember going in with the bandages on. Obviously, my ears are healing. And some guy just went like that and clapped me around the head. They were bleeding all down my neck. Like, kids are brutal. So do you think... Did that like set you up for the bullying that then you got by the trolls online? Do you think that made you tougher? That's what I mean. I thought I was pretty resilient because of that, but I don't think anything can compare, like prepare you, sorry, for the sheer volume of trolling. When you come out of that, like I thought I'm resilient. I've dealt with it my whole life. I've been bullied since we said like 13. I don't know why I'm like a cockroach that can't be killed. I think the more hate that comes my way, the more I'm like, watch this then. <laughs> it fuels me in a way, it's weird. But did you ever want to get back at them? When I first come out, I did make the mistake of trying to respond to some. I think the people that either in their profile picture, they would have their kids in their profile picture. And I would just think, how? How are you gonna incite hate onto a, someone who's early 20s? Your kids are gonna be that age one day. How would you feel if a 40 year old or a 50 year old was bullying your kid? Like that I did try and call them out, but really I think that just excites them more. It's probably for them, they're like, yeah, I've got her attention. What are we gonna say tomorrow? So I learned pretty quickly to nip that in the bud. I was like, control yourself, <laughs> Meg, don't do it. <laughs>